everybody. Mere viewers knew ek bahut pyar bari sachikal namaste salam this is dr biba singh and we are on my show rhythm of healing our aaj i am introducing a guest a woman ke jadon bhi main unnu milti hu whenever i meet her i wonder how does she do it all um not only does she have her own fabulous fashion line called stylish couture that blends south asian culture with a blend of the western world she has also started a youtube channel called brunch with bijal and if that's not enough she also is a mother to four beautiful children and the wife of mr stylish Anuj Vora who is also an ER physician managing two ERs. So without further delay, let us introduce my guest, Bijal Vora. Welcome Bijal. Hi Biba, thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm really We're excited. so so happy to have you. How are you? I'm doing great. Um I wish I could have been in the studio with you today as I mentioned. I'm taking a mini vacation with my family. So I appreciate that you guys are having me uh, sign in from here. So Bijal, um where you know there's so much to talk about, but to see ek bahut वे फैशन डिजाइनर हो तो एक इन्नी अच्छी लाइन है स्टाइलिश कोटूर सू थोड़ा जा अपने ब्रांड के बारे दसो वट इज स्टाइलिश कोटूर So Sauce Couture is custom fashion and it is I design for men, women and kids and I try to add a little bit of an Indian touch to any of our garments that we wear. So I want um Indian fashion to be cele- celebrated around the world and I design them for for everyday people. Um so I started about 4 years ago. How? How did you start? I mean to see anne busy ho tade ko char bacche ne bahut pyare pyare and तो सी मतलब किस तरह सोचा कि मैं अपनी फैशन लाइन शुरू करनी है Yeah so I actually have a lot of experience in fashion that not a lot of people knew about I've modeled for Manish Malhotra Ritu Kumar Pyal Singhal um and when I was working with a television show before interviewing a lot of these designers and celebrities for the red carpet I also got the opportunity to be in the fashion shows and speak to designers learn their inspiration learn a little bit about the personality they add in their fashion and when i was looking to embark on it a few year, years ago after i left my job in finance um i wasn't uh, that nervous because i had experience in finance and marketing from undergrad international management mba and a lot of experience working with designers and being a model um on runway and also you know throughout my life i've always whenever i've gone to india i've designed my own outfits i always found some local tailor and i went to the fabric store and i started designing long before this it's only in the last few years that um after i became a mother that it really changed my outlook on changing career paths and i feel like becoming a mother allowed me to um start my life in fashion because it was something that i can do while raising them and it That's gave me so that nice. outlet of creativity and so working with other people where you know when you're usually a new mom you don't get that chance to to interact with that many people because you're so busy with the children right. but now you know i went to india with a business plan a few years ago and um I started off with two teams and now I have six teams all throughout India and London wow. that work for me and all have different fortes and so it's fantastic like I'm always so excited to z- design something new I'm constantly motivated um and a lot of the fashion is actually things that I need myself um and how I still want to incorporate Indian something Indian whether it's our beautiful fabrics or the embroideries into my everyday life into my husband's life and into my kids life and that became a brand <laughs> That is so nice. It's so wonderful to hear your journey. Um I want to know um a little bit about the women empowerment movement. Um I know you did like a few shoots and I've seen some amazing work um about women empowerment. So tell us about that. 
Yeah, so um, as I mentioned earlier, you know, I was in finance working near Wall Street, working on big M&A deals, M&A deals meaning mergers and acquisitions. So I was there helping companies go public and it was so fun and fantastic to learn such different information, meet with CEOs, work on big deals that were affecting all of what we eat industries, companies that we use today. Like one of my biggest deals was the Shake Shack IPO, right? So everyone knew Shake Shack. I was sitting in their offices working on those deals. But doing that, I learned a lot of sales, customer relationships. So I feel like that gave me a lot of experience, but it also made me appreciate how um, amazingly talented CEOs are when you entrepreneurs. So I felt like when I, you know, when I started the brand, who did I want to represent my fashion? And because I came, I did have experience in modeling, I realized it wasn't just models I wanted in my fashion. I wanted it to be role models. So all of my, um, a lot of my campaigns have been surrounded about empowerment. And so first start off with female empowerment because I found so many amazing entrepreneurs that were South Asian and they were CEOs. So there were, um, or there were, you know, people like you, Biba, you're, you're a prime example. You know, on the side here you are, you're a physician, you're saving lives and you're doing amazing. And then here you are following your dreams, you know, and singing as well as being on the show. So I think that that you guys are the celebrities. You guys Aww, are should deserve to be on a pedestal. You. And you guys are role models. And I, I want to, I, I mean, if I have an opportunity to be someone that um, people visually look at my fashion, that I want to invite them in and tell that person's story. Because I think that it's so amazing. It's inspiring. And it actually, um, you guys are trailblazers. So Aww. that's how I started. And because I do men's fashion, I actually started a male empowerment campaign as well. Because I felt that, Due to you know us being minority, um, a lot of men were also in positions where they weren't able to climb the ladder mm. because they were men of color. So I know women have struggled for you know um, in many areas of our life because we are female, and it's been a little bit of a tougher road and tougher journey, which is changing. I think slowly but surely now, right. the future will be female. But I think men also deserve that. Um, that platform and the applause for what they've been going mm-hmm. through. So that's where I kind of started both campaigns. And it's been so much fun, Viva, because I've been pregnant majority of this. Oh my so God. it's kind of four carried kids, me through I know. my pregnancies. I had four kids in five years. That's um, so Stylish has obviously been a part of that whole journey. And what's been so cool about it is that I've traveled around the world um, to, t- to find these amazing people and tell these stories. And I, I would like to mention one that really touched my heart the most. And it was, I was in Mumbai. I was pregnant with my fourth, Brayden, who's only two years old right now. In Mumbai. And I, and I asked my husband, because I needed his approval as a physician, if I can travel to India, you know? And none of my pregnancies were good. They were like, I was sick throughout all of my pregnancies. Aww. My husband was putting I bees in my arms but I was like still a trooper right and um I went to India and I found this amazing woman Aditi Bijo how many months pregnant were you when you went I went when I was um just about six and a half months pregnant wow okay yeah so I was large I was big and so I went I went for a week and I met this uh, model this I'm sorry I met this entrepreneur named Aditi Verma and she only spoke in Hindi and and um, she had Down syndrome, but she oh. opened up her own restaurant in Mumbai, and it's called Aditi's Corner. Oh. And so I was so inspired by her story. We had the full team at the Taj Hotel, Land's End. I had a makeup artist. I had my uh, my team in, in Mumbai that came and met me in person, and we, we styled her, we dressed her oh. up. And when she looked in the mirror, we all just cried because oh. she, like, didn't have a reason to ever get glammed up. I mean, most people get glammed up on their wedding days, right. you know, unless you are in the limelight so it was so beautiful to see that and then I get to sit down and interview her so all of my empowerment campaigns are about you know we do a lot of photos but then we I also sit down and use my journalism side and I interview these um these amazing people and I ask them what made them get started Mm -hmm. I ask them um what are some advice they have for someone that wants to get started and I want them to have a community and so I feel like with Stylish Couture the name of the campaigns has been a style for every story and Aww. it's kind of stuck on it's really just been my passion um, right. to create a campaign like this that actually inspires other people and values them as game changers 
And I'm so excited that I got to do that. You know, these last few years while having children. Yeah, it's really amazing. Um, so I wanted to ask you, you have so much creativity. Um, and I see, like, we're going to be showing your uh, clips throughout. And I wanted to sh uh, ask you, I love some of your stuff that, like, how to restyle a langa or how to wear a dupatta multiple ways. Or, you know, many of us go to... Asi Indian events they be asi American events they be So some of your outfits could be, you know, multicultural. To see, matlab Indo-Western uh, outfits we banande So like that way it could be worn, you know, in different multiple ways, and we have multiple uses. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, I feel like our our culture is represented a lot in our fabrics and our embroideries and they tell a story so being um you know grew up i'm gujarati and i'm married into a punjabi family so i have so much love and pride for my culture and so but being born in the states i'm born in new jersey and so i feel like i have a nice blend of the indian upbringing as well as you know went to school here and assimilated to the culture here as well so because I'm a mix of both cultures, that's what my fashion represent, represents. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you know, we live in a melting pot in this beautiful world, and especially in America, where, you know, I can see uh, people that are non-Indians appreciate some of my fashion. So right. because they do, I think it's a really great way to embrace another culture and invite people into our culture by showing them maybe a blazer that maybe with a little bit of Indian kundan buttons, for example, that they can appreciate and they love and they think it's so unique and they, they respect. And I think that's a form of unity. So mm -hmm. um, that's one of the, the campaigns that I also put forward. That's just the way I was brought up is to, you know, look at everyone as equal and everyone as one. And so my fashion represents that as well. Very nice. So um, how can people look at your stuff, your videos, your Instagram, Facebook, where do people follow you? Yeah, so um, thanks so much for asking. I recently started our website. Uh, before, I was so busy just doing custom fashion and w raising the four kids. Um, you know, my husband's on the front lines. So usually it's just me and the four children these last few years. And then, of course, like my growing team in India and London. And, um, you know, having having to balance mom life and designer life and just being a wife in general. I feel like um, now I actually have a website. I started a YouTube channel this year and the brand is actually under the umbrella of Bijal Vora uh, because a lot of people started asking me about how I balance the family life. Some people are interested in the fashion, some people are interested in um, some of the other things that I do as a, as a female entrepreneur or a woman in general. So because I wore so many hats and I found that people were interested in learning about them, I created everything under Bijal Vora. And so you can go to bijalvora.com um, and then you'll find a bunch of my videos. You'll find links to my YouTube channel. You'll find um, outfits to buy. And you'll also find my lookbook of a lot of the uh, celebrities that I've styled. Very nice. And speaking of, to see bought sari celebrities new style kitai, bought sari models new. Tell us some of the people you styled. Yeah, so to my earlier point, um, I think celebrities, you know, of course, being in the limelight always needs to look glamorous, but then at the same time, they also need to look like themselves. And I, I take a lot of pride in getting to know clients and seeing, you know, what colors they like, what's, I get an idea of what styles they already wear. So then this way, I'm not changing their entire look. I'm actually customizing my pieces to so their personality so they still feel comfortable in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to me. I wanna make sure that people feel confident on the inside when they wear my things and I actually listen to them um, based on what they do, what kind of look they wanna uh -huh. achieve and how they want it, what their image to look I like. I think that's so I what's think, really... I think that, that's what's really amazing about you, is that you actually get to know the person. But I definitely want to hear more about this right after a quick break. Sure.
welcome back. Welcome back to all our guests. And um, we were talking before the break on a lot of your, you know, uh, ways to make people feel comfortable, which is a beautiful trait that you have. But what I want to ask you is, to see both fashion uh, line, which both sari cheese are kar deo, and some of your stuff um, is maybe not, you know, uh, something that people are maybe used to, such as um, your pregnancy shoot and you getting that beautiful tattoo from Beyonce's tattoo artists. How did the community react to that? How did you feel? Well, you know, that was my fourth pregnancy. And I think that at, at that time, or my fourth child, I should say, and I think at that time I was like, not nervous about um, being a woman and a mother and all the all the taboos that we have in our society about being pregnant and the expectations that are held upon us. I felt like I already had so many children that the fourth one, at this point, it was okay for me to let go a little bit. And that was my first time I did a photo shoot of myself being pregnant and showing my belly. And I'm so proud that, you know, Beyonce actually respected our henna artist. It was Glory of Henna. And I went to LA and I was pregnant and it actually just fell on my lap. I was not looking to be in the shoot. And I was using, um, uh, a henna company to ta to tattoo onto the to the girls because I wanted to make it very exotic and fun and and show like how our henna can be applied on our arms and in a very artistic style. So since they knew since they saw that I was pregnant right then and there, they absolutely wanted to tag my stomach and they gave wow. me all the confidence. And because Beyonce did it, I felt like okay, that's pretty cool. Like I I want to do that. I'm Indian. This is my own henna. If Beyonce is going to show our culture, I want to do it and stand exactly. really proud as well. And it was amazing. I mean, I felt like a real woman. I really did. I, that was I a felt very, like very to cool. be able to embody yeah. our culture around my my stomach, which holds, you know, the generations of Indian kids, right? I have four beautiful Indian kids, and I'm raising them with our culture. And to be able to like almost decorate the, myself with that was just um, such an amazing moment for me. So tell us uh, more about to see. मतलब एक obviously एक fashion uh, designer उस एक तरीकों बहुत अच्छा brand है but तरीकों चार छोटे छोटे बच्चे हैं and how do you do it? I mean how do you raise them? Tell us a little bit about your family and your family life. Um, tell us more. Yeah, so thanks for asking. Um, I, you know, my husband and I, we, we love marriage and we were introduced by our siblings and we're so thankful to them and a lot of other couples where we were enjoying our, our married life before having kids. And then when we wanted to have kids, we couldn't. And it was such a big shock for us. And so we tried a lot of different things and eventually what worked for us was IVF, so in vitro. So we did IVF and the most amazing part about it is that our fourth is actually a miracle baby. Yeah, wow. so I was trying to get, we were trying to get pregnant. And so our, my firstborn, Jake, he's six years old. I have twins, Isabella and Dylan, and they are four years old. And my surprise miracle baby is Brayden, and he is two years old. Aww. And he was actually the one that we didn't do IVF with, and he came naturally. And, um, you know, we, we share that story very proudly because in our culture, sometimes these are the things that are not spoken of, and these are challenges right. that a couple goes through. Right. Um, and I think it's really important, you know, if you have the strength and the audience to talk to, um, that we should share our story. And I'm glad that more and more people are, like me, coming out and saying these things because we can help so many people, you know, right. get pregnant, stay positive because of this story that I told. So yeah. um, that's kind of a reason that I... I can do it because I was, I wanted to have children. Um, you know, I was madly in love with Anuj and we want to have a beautiful family and, ex and, you know, continue the lineage of our, of who we are. And, um, we couldn't get pregnant, but then we got blessed with four, um, yeah. back to back to back. So I was wow. like, I guess God thinks I can handle it. If he's giving me a miracle baby, he went up like so wow. much later in life. But that's, great. Um, that's why it's very hard for me to complain because yeah. I wanted this so bad and I worked really hard to get it. Yeah, I know. And so 
The other thing I wanted to ask you about is brunch with Bijal. I've been seeing this, and this is really cool. Yes. To see a new YouTube channel, TV, a show, started, brunch with Bijal. Thoda ja sanu oda bara vida so. Yeah, thanks for asking. So uh, when you go to Bijal Vora on YouTube, I have three different segments on my channel, and three because I wanted to appeal to a lot of different audiences. So. The, a a lot of people are asking about my family. And so how, because we, we go everywhere, we do everything together and it's just Anuj and me and the kids or sometimes it's just me and the children. Right. Um, there's no nanny on the background or anyone helping. It's, it's really just us trying to show like the crazy and fun side of uh, a family, like the values, the dynamics. Um, and we want to spread some positivity. We want to make people laugh. And the kids are pretty funny. So we started doing a family vlog, which means you basically, we take you into our life. And I believe we're one of the only Indian families that's showcased on YouTube at the moment, uh, which is exciting. And Brunch with Bijal is one of the other segments because I actually didn't know how to cook much meat. And my husband is like proper Punjabi, you know, mom makes amazing chicken curry and they love their kebabs and you know so i wanted to like learn to cook you know me a little bit better and so um but gr growing up gujarati i ate a lot of vegetables my whole life there's a lot of subsies and stuff so when i started understanding my husband in the medical profession and how i had to take care of him and make sure he has constant vitamins and healthy food and he was also teaching me about it I decided to, to actually blend my Gujarati upbringing, which is vegetables and subsies and things like that that are really good for us and I think add to my energy. Um, mm -hmm. And then blend that with, you know, Punjabi cooking. And nice. to merge the two is really kind of cool because it's not out there in cookbooks. It's not a recipe. I actually make it up myself. Gujaratis are really resourceful if, you, if you've come across Gujaratis. And so I basically just use whatever I have in my fridge and I work with it. So sometimes I'll do like spinach and bell peppers will be the base of my curry and i'll add um, a little bit of milk to it with chicken milk because it's dairy so instead of using heavy cream i use milk and i find that my food comes out really soft i mean i've actually pleased my mother-in-law who's a beautiful punjabi woman she's half sikh and she's um half hindu punjabi and she's like these are the best kebabs i've ever had wow. and i use turkey meat because it's leaner and then half of the kebab is actually vegetables so it's wow. spinach it's bell pepper a lot of times i don't even use any oil or butter can you imagine indian cooking without those two things that we That's were raised cool. to put in our kana right so starting brunch with bijal is i love cooking uh, but i love also cooking and then spending time with my family while they're eating it right like nice. a lot of times we as women or men are stuck in the kitchen and you like are cooking and making all these amazing meals and you don't actually get to see the smiles on the faces right. of the people you're feeding so for me we're foodies so yes. my husband's I, I know especially in a time like a pandemic you know i want to pump the most vitamins i can put in my children and my husband um while they're going on the front lines and so i'm a little less nervous mm -hmm. i know i packed them in with goodies and you know a lot of the times i mean if four kids you'll see that we actually like, don't don't get sick knock on wood that often but i i really want to attribute that to the amount of vegetables and fruit that they actually eat. And I've done that wow. from the get go. And that's where Brunch with Bijal started because I want to share those secrets with all of you. That's I want people awesome. to be healthier. I want people to feel like, you know, um, like sh shop a little bit differently with their groceries right. um, and still be economical. You know, you don't have to be so, spend so much money to get good meals. Yeah. And also you don't have to spend so much time. Right. So how to be resourceful, make really good meals, use it different ways, make right. one meal for your, your, I like spicy food. Like I love eating green chilies. It's something that I got for my wow. uh, Punjabi father-in-law. He'll have a kebab and a green chili in his hand. And, and green chilies have tons of vitamin C, by the way. You're making so me like, hungry, by the way, now. But putting it for my kids' food, now Brunch with Bijal now teaches you those recipes where you can make, for example, a salmon three ways in less wow. than 40 minutes. So, so Bijal, you know, something that appeals to many palates. Yeah. Bijal, you're doing fashion. You're busy being a mom and a wife and now a cooking show. What is next in your future? What do you have planned? 
Well, the cooking show is actually, everything on the channel still has some sort of fashion in it. So I wear my outfits on the cooking show. And I feel like it's a nice way for me to reach out to a culinary audience or just someone that wants to learn quick cooking and isn't so scared. I mean, maybe scared in the beginning, but then it's almost like, how can I teach someone to cook without them being so nervous about it? You wow. Know, make it fun. So and you like cool. to combine a lot of things I see, which is really I'm great. I'm so excited that you've to see such a show that I O R Lokanal Galbat Kiti or we got to learn about so much of your life, your family, um, your creative energies. Um, people are gonna love to follow you, bijalvora.com. We have loved having you on the show, so thank you so so much. Um, you know, it's been a pleasure, and uh, we hope to have you back soon. Thank you, Vito. Mwah. Biba, I'm so honored that you ch selected me on, on your show. Your show is amazing. Um, I mean, the first guest you had was my husband, and I remember coming there and styling both of you guys and making Aww. sure you're perfect on camera. So it truly is an honor to be sitting in that seat. Yes. Um, so thanks, thanks, thanks to you and your team for having me. Thank you, and thank you all for watching Rhythm of Healing. Mm -hmm.